guys, welcome back to another Chitter Chatter. Today we're gonna have a chit chat with Rashmi. Well, you have seen my review about this book, Mars, Venus, and all that bullshit. Yes, this book is very different from Mars and Venus that you've read years back. This book is gonna clear a lot of myths about what the relationship is like, what are men like, what are women like. So don't be like, oh, I've read Mars and Venus, and you know, lines of the same. This is completely different and trust me, when you read this book, you will also have a lot of suggestions and I would strongly, strongly recommend you to read this book. So right now we are going to have a chit chat with Rashmi and she's right here. So I'm going to send her a request and get started with this chit chat. Hello, Dr. Asna. Uh, Rashmi, I can't see you. Hi, Rashmi Desai. Okay, uh, Okay. right now Rashmi is not here but she'll be here soon and she'll send me a request. So let me tell you a little more about this. Well, this book has all the research done. I mean, I am so, so shocked and spellbound on the number of research that is gone. It is pretty theoretical but trust me, when you read it, you're not going to find it boring. You're going to find it very interesting and you'll suddenly realize that there is so much that is out there. You know it, you know it all, but it's just that you've now tapped it or you've forgotten about it all and you will see your relationships, how better they become. Hey Nanki, how are you? Hey Yashraj, Lakshman, Amit, Fahad, Shikha Kumari. Hello everyone and I must say thank you for always joining my Chitter Chatter and motivating me for these lovely chit chats. Your comments, your views and your questions are always welcomed and that is what keeps us going. And let me check if Rashmi is here and maybe we can send her a chit chat and get started. Queen Khan, Richa, Kriti, Arman, Raju Rohalan. So yeah, you all can tell me what did you like about the book. The questions that you all have asked me to ask her, I've already noted it all. And hopefully, I shall try and cover all of it and as much as I can. Though I don't promise everything, but I still can't see Rashmi here. So let me check with her where is she and in the meantime, can we like... So, hello... So I'm waiting for Rashmi to join in and Rashmi has just joined in and I'm going to send her a request and we'll go live with Rashmi right away because there's so much I want to ask her and know from her. And here I've sent Preeti, Nurul, XS Shivam. Thank you people for joining this Chitra Chatter. I like to take the names of all but obviously. Hi Rashmi, how are you? Hey there, I'm good. How are you? Very good. So welcome on this Chitta Chatter and we, all the viewers here, are waiting to know all about this book. Yes, absolutely. I'm right there waiting to answer all the questions. <laughs> so tell me, what was the trigger point to write such a heavy book? Well, you know, I started realizing, Shweta, that it, it, this is all humbug. You know, how men think and women think and men are different, women are different. Because I always saw myself reacting to situations based on what the situation demanded, not based on whether I was a woman or a man, you know. So I realized that it is all a myth. You know, when we bracket men and women in straight jacketed roles, it's all bakwas to be uh, to be precise, you know. So then I started realizing that this is how I react. So I'm sure there are others who react like that. And th there are others who rise up to the occasion and bring out the yin or the yang whenever it is necessary. So once I realized all this, I started doing my research. And after doing my research, I started interviewing people. After interviewing people and my research and the experiments, I collated the whole data and I figured, damn, I was right. So this is how it gave me that, uh, you know, the trigger point to start writing the book because I knew I'm thinking right. So Definitely. That. You know, when I read the book, I realized that somewhere we are aware of certain things. But uh, it's just taken for because of our surroundings or the way in the belief systems that brought up with or other people around. So 
so somewhere we started neglecting those things or somewhere at our subconscious we are aware of it but it's just totally neglected but there is one strong thing that i want to ask when you were doing this book it obviously has a very ex- extensive research like the research you've done covers everything come on yeah you've gone to the cave times till today <laughs> like that's the best part like it's not left a single stone unturned when it comes to research you uh like have everything like emotional aspect the physical aspect the spiritual aspect so yes. i really so like you know i was trying i was really concentrating mai kuch to chhoda hoga research wise that you know, could be like you know maybe a part two could come with that so what was your writing process like when you were going through this research process was uh, easy and difficult i'll tell you why because i had decided that this is my thought process and i have corroborated it with my research and all the experiments and the interviews etc i knew my thought process is right but i didn't know where to start because there were so many thoughts in my mind i didn't know whether i should start with when men and women are similar or men and women are seemingly different or uh, where to start where what the starting point should be you know so the first step was how to start and the and where i started actually became my fourth chapter so there was okay. so much that i wanted to write even before i thought i had started so uh, it's been tough and easy and research has been tough actually i have also made the effort to go interview different types of people and uh, believe you me even the third gender so i have researched uh, about what they think so when we think about men women women think like that men think like that and women are more emotional emotional men are not emotional men are more aggressive women are not aggressive they are cranky or whatever it is we have these set ideas i wanted to know what the ideas of the third gender is what do they think so if if the third gender a particular person thinks that she is a man or she is a woman what does she think what is the thoughts in her mind so i have gone to the depths of figuring out what the reality behind the genders is and this drama the symbolism behind men or women is it actually true most of it is drama believe me so when you come down to basics you realize aisa kuch nahi hai baba be normal be a human being react to situations bring out the yin bring out the yang the masculine and the feminine if you bring that energy within your own system you become a potent force of nature and i'm not faffing i have experienced this not through myself through my life but through others lives as well it's been an amazing process really lovely journey i have to tell you that i have to tell you that you know like you say that what is more important a human and you know being masculine or feminine all that comes secondary we need to concentrate on that and we need to tell our generation that the older generation also get on to that that you know it's important exactly and that's exactly what your book put across i mean at every point and the best part you didn't come across strongly because usually when you have a point like this a writer comes across very strongly which kind of takes you back but your writing didn't have so was it a conscious effort to you know let me just put the facts out there and let's decide exactly i wanted to because uh, you know all said and done you cannot deny the injustice that women have faced over the centuries uh, but what people fail to see that men have been victims too and people don't realize in which ways men have been victims so i have put in not the problems of women but also the problems of men and i have put in data so this is the data this is what it is these are the facts these are the figures this is my uh, interpretation and it's not towards any one side if it is so why it is so so i've given explanation about everything that i have thought of and put it out there and tried not to come out strongly because like you said i have um, you know given that leave it to people to decide what they think is right or wrong so this is yes the idea behind putting uh, facts figures and my interpretation slightly lightly not strong yes while writing this book did it excite you or did it exhaust you 
वो एक एग्जॉस्टेड मी समाइम्स एंड एक्साइटेड मी बिकॉज समाइम्स यू नो वट है फ्लो विद द इमोशन in a uh, couple of paragraphs actually in the book i was uh, feeling strongly about something you know and i wanted to write strongly also use those words that would express myself or my thought process strongly but i had to rein in my emotions you know so there is that particular incident over there when i had seen a video of of a gentleman who in the name of comedy was putting down women like you know constantly wives are like that and you be you and glorifying men we have compartments and women are everything is connected to everything else blah blue 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 so i have mentioned that video in my book and i was very uh, excited emotionally excited you know and i wanted to express my excitement but since i am writing a uh, you know like a, a economist book i had to control my emotions so i had flown in my emotion at that time another couple of times yes and uh, excited because wow as i was writing my book there were revelations you know i i thought that this aspect even i didn't think of when i was thinking of writing the book so through the journey i also learned you know i had a certain thought process i did my research yes but through the journey through those two years i was learning every single day and eventually what came out i was happy when i read it you know so yes excitement and uh, uh, yes sometimes also a little boredom because research is uh, slightly tough to do i've done about 1800 to 2000 man hours of research on this book so sometimes that can get a little boring but uh, yes it is a mixed bag of excitement emotional roller coaster so you can say that you know like you just mentioned that you had such an extensive task given to you so when you have so much matter and in the base that you're crafting it becomes very difficult to edit because you want to say it all how was your editing process oh my god my book was at least 400 pages you know then i started realizing my god this much detail is not required you know so when i say that when a man takes on the nurturing role for example i'm just giving you an example in my book i've written about an experiment where a man let's say if a man takes on a primary nurturing role there's a lot of chemical changes happening in the body just because he is succumbing to that role yielding to that role just like a mother does to a child we think it is only a mother's role but when a man gives uh, the primary uh, care his body the biochemistry also changes according to the role so i wanted to write so many things about the hormones and you know what all is released and how the body changes and how the mind changes etc so i had those 10 15 pages of just that small topic but then i realized this is not required you know all i need to do is just concentrate maybe basic on one hormone say let's say oxytocin and the uh, the brain you know the release of uh, whatever the hormones that are uh, necessary to take on that role so yes the editing process was very difficult because i wanted to tell the world i'm right i'm right i'm right listen listen you know so and uh, later when when you edit actually you write but after that when you edit you realize hey this is not needed so then you start editing but it's important to write the whole thing because you need to uh, know in those 10 15 pages of one little topic what is most important so editing was tough too most definitely let's come to the title when was you know there but will how did the title come up you know what happened was i have always been thinking that i want to write a book because my journey uh, well to come on the serious note my journey has been tough from childhood i guess everybody goes through a lot of nonsense in their lives and now you look back and realize that hey it was a learning process you know it was not nonsense it's just a part of the process you know so uh, what happens is when i went through that process i had started realizing that i am succumbing or yielding to symbolism so for example i give a very small example 
let's say a lady with a baby in her arms it never got the you know the screams of adulation from me oh so cute my god baby and all that i never felt that way you know frankly to tell you the truth but i did it because i was supposed to be the feminine side of life and you know a, a, the sight of a baby in somebody's arm should get the you know squeals of adulation from me to, to you know my essential effeminate side and all that so it never happened but i had to put that show on and this is just one chota little example i'm giving you we do it all the time every time and it really the truth why do we need those pencil heels sometimes i feel i want to go against the whole pencil heel thing you know let us relax just take it easy you know you don't have to do it so i'm not judging but what i'm trying to say is these small small symbols of femininity or masculinity etc this is what this is how i started realizing those small 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 things and as i grew uh, i started realizing that yes there is a whole lot of polarity over here that we need to bridge we need to bridge that gap and not pull each other apart uh, so uh, you know this is this is the starting point and then as life happened more and more situations wanted me to bring out my yang energy you know the male energy masculine energy whatever that you might want to call it you know so i started realizing i am being a woman because i want to be that effeminate woman if i want to handle the roles that that requires that yang energy in me then i can do it so this is how I started realizing this is the base foundation of where i started and then the thought of a book and then rest is history here it is <laughs> and why bullshit why bullshit sorry i said it is not just history there is a new beginning because i'm sure whoever reads this book is going to have a very different outlook generally you know every book anyways changes you there is a little change that comes in a fictional book but this book is like trust me uh, i'm being biased people out here but if i was given a chance i would call this a book which should be in every curriculum and especially you know towards the eighth grade where it should be like skill for adults like you need to read this to understand what it is about you know like like i said i'm not being biased here but i really now was reading at no point i felt that okay you know this could be edited or there was a question that i wanted to know more and there was so much which just made us feel like you know yeah if a guy wants to nurture let him do it it's not necessary Absolutely. the only bread earner and he needs to go out and if a girl doesn't want to wear a pencil heel or not be like oh i may be so cute let her or be. not have a baby for that matter even if she if it's fine so yo there is lot of love coming your way other authors are telling you hello sonu sonpari saying way to go gal rush proud of you such deep conversation i can keep listening and yes i can keep reading so it's going to be a stand alone or there is something more coming up on these lines well um currently this is a stand alone because i think i have tried to you know uh, encompass everything as far as men and women is concerned and i forgot to answer that question of yours why bs why bullshit because there is a book by john gray uh, named men are from mars and women are from venus and uh, these kind of books only increase that distance that polarity between men and women we need to bridge that gap we, and when we come on a level playing ground is when things will start changing when our people around us start thinking that ye you know i'll tell you one small example let's say uh, a parent who has only one single girl ye to mera beta hai why does it have to be that why mera beta hai to mere beti hai mera khayal rakhegi why like, why not like that you know so these small 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 thing there are so deep rooted in it's in our blood so i want to change it that's why i call it bs because it is bs there is nothing like a 
strong man or a strong woman you know in the strong means not uh, not from the point of view of a character i mean to say symbolic man or symbolic woman i cannot say that i am only woman or only man i like to um, uh, i like mechanical things i like maths i like so many other things that are supposedly a man's domain and there might be certain men in fact i'm telling you my kids my my sons are um, so fond of jewelry and they proud of it you know they wear it with a plum i like this chain or i like this one little stud here there they like to wear their kadas and stuff different different types of kadas whenever they go to goa they'll bring some nice uh, you know beaded kadas and stuff like that. i like it and uh, uh, this is a change that we need to bring in in our system in our blood so that's why unless we call this bs it's not going to change so that's i wanted to answer that question of yours in <laughs> john gray that was my next question because when i put the review of the book so you know many people told me oh, i read something on those lines and i was like okay you know that was quite a surprise for me i was like what have you all read and a few of them also mentioned to me oh mars versus um, anna from mars woman from venus laundry i said yeah. oh, hold on this is nowhere close to that and yes on the same line so please go read this book because it is a totally opposite of that yeah it is an antithesis of that it's like radically opposite so that's why purposely i've kept this uh, uh title for the book to release the book like i just put a review and i see people telling me that what was the uh, people's approach towards you when this title was released oh well my publisher was uh, uh thankfully they agreed but uh, you know i had a, a couple of people telling me from the uh, agency are you sure you want this title is isn't it uh, rather radical do you think uh, uh, your publisher will agree to this and things like that you know but uh, yes it was a lot of back and forth but i'm so thankful to my publishers for uh, agreeing for this title you know it it requires a bold mindset of course it took me some time to come out with this title also but somebody to accept your point of view it takes an open mind so i am so thankful to my publishers vishwakarma publishers for having go uh, for going with my title so yes it is it is a bold one it's a bold decision but it happened thank god <laughs> how was it working with a publication you know being a newbie having such a strong book with strong thoughts and a strong and bold title what was the journey like with vishwa publications so this is my third book actually and um, initially it is exhaustive with the first time when you're wanting to get your book published it is exhausting because you don't know where to go whether you should uh, self publish your book whether you should go to a, a publisher and you go through that whole cycle of sending your manuscript to so many publishing houses and then you're stuck in your head that no i want a traditional publisher and well known publisher the fact is most of the publishers will trash your manuscript 99.9% of the times so uh, you know the journey i tell i would want to tell to all the new authors who have written a book or wish to write a book just feel free to self publish your book if you're tired of approaching publishers of course keep at it it's it always helps to have a traditional publisher but uh, eventually there's a lot that you need to do yourself so whether it is a self published book or it is through a traditional publisher you have to put in the effort you know you have to go out there and tell the world hey there's something like this you need to read this because um this is going to affect your life positively so unless i am sure and passionate about it how will uh, others also be passionate about it or at least know that there's something out there in the market so um this is what happens generally you know so anybody who wants to publish go ahead even if you have a, a small time publisher for getting uh, getting ready to publish your book it's fine you know the first time it's all right and then once you get into this rigmarole role then again you become uh, pro at it you know exactly what to do so it's it's like a journey like any thing it is thank you to do this book this took me 2 years 
two years of extensive research writing and then you have to be disciplined you know even on certain days you don't feel like writing but you have to sit at that time so my time used to be 7:30 when children used to go to school uh, till 1 o'clock till they came back 1 1:30 so i used to sit at that time but there are times when you don't feel like writing your mind is not exactly out there you know and every time you cannot be creative or every time you cannot be Uh, potent you know you this there's a lot that maybe sometimes is going on in your mind or you not slept well or you've had a bad um, uh, tiring day previously anything reasons can be many but it is important to sit so what happens when you sit is even if you don't feel like writing you go back and do your research you read your books so you go on the uh, net you do your google searches you come out with your data so this is how uh, this i would suggest to everybody who wishes to write sit if you seriously want to take up writing as a career or if you're generally fond of it so want to publish a book you make sure that you sit in at least for those 2 3 hours if nothing else you know so that is uh, important and a uh, very strong note that i would like to highlight the right words here that you know it is very important to sit because there are days where you want to but don't get out like i have been wanting to write a second book and it's been 2 years but that discipline to <laughs> so I will repeat it to him. Tell myself that listen, Tata, you need to sit. You need to be disciplined. Yes, yes, totally. So important to just sit. Like you know, sometimes I remember, my God, I used to just go and. There used to be a silly thing that I used to do. Can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay, okay. So there are times when I don't even feel like doing research. I don't feel like writing. I don't know what to do. There's a silly thing that I do sometimes. I just light that agarbatti and go take it in my room, and I just take in the fumes, do some breathing techniques, and then maybe after fifteen twenty minutes, ah, I feel alive again, and then maybe okay, then I slowly go on the net and do my research. So there are days when you don't feel like doing anything. but i used to go and sit on that table open my laptop and just sit you know like that so yeah that discipline is what is very crucial in writing something or or writing something out there so also true, true. what is it like working with the book baker and so in mathur oh my experience uh, has been very good with them they are so helpful and uh, uh, you know sometimes you feel that uh, maybe my manuscript is not good maybe uh, you know i may not get the best publisher and uh, things like that there are a lot of doubts in one's mind but uh, you know the best part about bookmakers and suhail actually is that uh, they are with you throughout the way and uh, they'll get you the best deal so never feel that oh why not this publisher that publisher was better or whatever it is but eventually uh, they know best you know uh, so they they know their authors very well and it's not just okay let uh, isko a book de diya publisher ko book de diya and uh, done with it that's not it so they they'll help you with a lot of things they'll groom you then they they have uh, various other facilities that you can choose from and you know so it's not just they don't leave you midway they always there for you always there to give advice always there to help you with the whole process so yes i'm so thankful to my lit agency and uh, suhail and of course suveda <laughs> now strongly though you written earlier books but every book the amount of effort put in it's literally crafted and you can't feel of that book of mine or like but when you had the copy of this book in your hand what were the emotions you went through oh my god it is something different you know when you you know that you're writing a book and you've had that experience before i've had my book in my hand etc but every time a book your book comes in your hand it's like oh my baby you know it's like that in spite of the fact that i said that oh i didn't like babies at that time but <laughs> i'm a mom now and now i like babies so but this is like a baby every time you hold your book in your hand you feel that it's like a culmination you know but 
and a manuscript will never give you that feeling. Although you see your PDF files and uh, all that on the net, but when you have your hard copy in your hand, it's another feeling altogether. And uh, every time, you know, when the book comes, you don't know what the reviews are going to be because only you know what you've written. Your publisher knows what you've written. You, your editor knows what you've written, but you don't know what others will feel about your book. So uh, I'm getting such amazing reviews about the book and I'm so glad that people are agreeing with that. And what you said, you know, earlier, that the points of views are not strong, very strong. I've given data, I have given opinions, I have given a lot, lot, lot of information, research, but I have not expressed it strongly. So maybe that's also a, a good thing because even men are very, very accepting. Anyway, this is not a bashing book as such. It is it is a, um, a book which is projecting the man and the woman equally. So when we talk about women equality here, I've also spoken about men equality. When you spoke, speak about breast cancer and research, why aren't we speaking about prostate cancer and research? You know, so there's this lot that has gone into it. So I suggest even men should read it. They don't even know that they are victims. So, you know, we, we have to uh, get these kind of books out there so that there is another point of view and not just polarity, polarity, men are different, women are different, men are different. And sometimes people are comparing men and monkeys, chimpanzees, DNA, and not men and uh, men and women. I'm telling you through my research, I've had such funny experiences. You know, I've read a research and it's a proper established research at Stanford University. Men are compared to chimpanzees, but they have a problem comparing men to women. So, you know, these things need to change. But when you do deeper research and when you see other research, you realize that it's so biased, you know. So data is data. It all depends on how you interpret it. So I've interpreted it completely differently. So people should read it just to know that radical point of view, yet it seems so right. Wow, really? It's like that, you know. So on this note, I'm going to tell all our viewers out here that you should, after our Twitter chatter, go and download this book on your Kindle, buy it for your Kindle version, get a paperback from Amazon, please go get this book and you can DM, rush me and tell her how you like this, put your reviews on all the platforms and also tell us how much more and what your thought like, how did you change as a man or a woman or become a better human. So post us yes. your chat up, go and get this book. But before we end our chitter chatter, Rashmi, we are going to have a quick fun round. Is, uh, just a little fun to know more about you as a reader, since we are all motivated people here to read your book and for reading in general. So what is your favorite series? Favorite? Series. Uh, in the book? Yeah. Which series, which book series have you thoroughly enjoyed? My book, right? No, no. Sorry. Well, what series have you enjoyed reading? Uh, in which uh, genre you are talking about? Any genre. Really? If Any I say genre. a book series that you have really enjoyed reading. Oh, okay. Sorry. I didn't get you because it was getting cut. Huh, I you thought know, I, Yeah, yeah. Actually, I like Robin Sharma a lot. So, I read his books often and whenever there's a new book, I immediately order it. So, I absolutely love the series because he keeps coming out with these uh, self-help books and things like that. I'm more of a non-fiction person. So I uh, really enjoy those books. And I like Deepak Chopra. I like Robin Sharma. I used to like Rhonda Byam, of course, a lot. So these are these are the books that I absolutely love. And I feel my books are very much, uh, in fact, you can call me the female version of Robin Sharma because I do feel that my style is very similar. <laughs> I would want to believe so. Yeah. E-books or uh, audiobooks? Or paperback? Paperback. Always. I like the feel of the book in my hands. And when I'm lying down and reading in my bed, so it's, it's a different feeling altogether. Paperback. Always. A book which is your favorite book all time? Robin Sharma, 5 a.m. Club. How did you get into reading? 
well to tell you the truth people will be surprised when i say this i have not been much of a reader frankly i'm not a crazy really? reader <laughs> yeah. i have started reading non fiction books very late like uh, maybe in my 30s i started reading non fiction books i'm more of a writer uh, although uh, these specific books like i mentioned you know non fiction self help books and all that i do invest a lot in them and of course i like my yoga books because i'm into yoga i'm a yoga teacher yoga instructor i do take corporate trainings i do take uh, regular classes as well so i have tons of yoga books i uh, read lots of yoga books and self help books but uh, my reading journey started rather late you know people would think that a person who writes may also be a ardent reader voracious reader but unfortunately it wasn't like that it's just now that i've started reading quite a bit maybe for the last few years since the time i wrote my first book 10 years ago so that was uh, that is my journey i've not been a reader but like i said these are my favorite genres you know so what was the book that you last read book that i last read well um, i read the gita and translated a few verses just day before yesterday so i love to read uh, historical books and our uh, text really not religious text i'm not much of a religious person frankly i don't believe too much in religion each to their own but i'm just saying that what i like to read is uh, more from the point of view of you know life's fundamentals and sahasra bodha and you have your uh, yoga books hatha yoga pradipika hiran samita the gita i like to read all these kind of books a lot so that that and translate verses so it's a beautiful uh, journey you know so i am start i started to understand these things much better now for the last few years so yeah that's the last book i read the gita <laughs> so that is all about our chitter chatter today thank you rashmi for your lovely time and for the lovely book and uh, we shall wish you best wishes for this book and for many more that you're going to write and looking forward for many more chitter chatters and many more things so Best wishes. Thank you so much. Shweta, can I take a screenshot? I'll send you. I've taken a few of them if you want, or uh, we can take one with the book also. Yo, you can take a screenshot. Oh, but I won't be able to take it like that. Oh, okay, wait. Let's. Try. Yeah. I think I did something, and we figured to get. Wait, I'll try one more. Smile, please. Okay, I think I did take some screenshots, so I'm going to send it to you. and uh, oh. guys this chitter chatter is going to be on our ig tv so in case you missed or joined in late you can tag your friends you can go and watch the entire interview on our ig tv right now as i log out it's going to be on ig tv and besides that later it's going to be on spotify and youtube too so do log in do your our interview and if you've still not read the book then please go ahead and buy the book right now and dm rush me and tell her all that you liked about the book and See you soon. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs>